Welcome, I'm Steve Hammack from Honeywell's Flight Technical Services Group. In our last Radar Quick Topic video, we looked inside the 3D volumetric buffer of Honeywell's RDR 4000 and RDR 7000 interview weather radar systems. Most newer radar systems today provide modes for automatic weather detection, but they stop there and don't provide tools to aid you in making a deviation decision. Sometimes, just using the auto mode alone, you can see that a deviation path will be required as well as the path. Other times, determining the path to take is much more difficult. In addition to the automatic weather detection mode, the RDR 4000 and 7000 provide analysis modes to aid in making deviation decisions. Today, we're going to show you how to use constant altitude slices to analyze weather and make a deviation decision. Recall from our previous video that the data put into the 3D buffer is corrected for the Earth's curvature, and that's why they're called constant altitude slices. They are true MSL altitudes. If left uncorrected, the effect of the Earth's curvature can be quite significant. In the picture shown, the aircraft is at flight level 250. However, because of the Earth's curvature, the center of the beam is above 27,000 feet at 60 nautical miles, almost 37,000 feet at 120 nautical miles, and 44,000 feet at 150 nautical miles. First, why do we look at the colors? From studies, we know that with higher reflectivity comes a higher probability of turbulence and increased hail size. Higher reflectivities come from large raindrops, water-covered hail, and melting hail. Very strong updrafts, usually associated with high instability, push more water and hail higher into the atmosphere, resulting in higher reflectivities aloft. With stronger updrafts come strong downdrafts and severe turbulence, so cells that show higher reflectivity aloft represent more severe storms and should be given extra separation. We won't be using gain control in this example, but here we'll provide some tips. Increased gain is useful when looking at less reflective frozen storm tops to get a more accurate measurement. Gain reduction has several uses. When looking at groups of cells, reducing the gain shows the relative intensity between the cells, leaving the strongest cells and turbulence indications because gain doesn't affect turbulence detection. Also, using gain reduction, you can effectively create another color level. The system has a gain range of minus 16 dB to plus 10 dB. If you reduce the gain until red turns to yellow, yellow turns to green, and the green disappears, you've just reduced the gain 10 dB, and you know any red remaining is at least 50 dBZ. This lets you know that you're dealing with a more dangerous cell. Note that you need red reflectivity to start out with for this to work. One last thing before we start. Let's look at some different control panels and the interface we'll use in this example. Here we see the Boeing and Airbus control panels. On the Boeing panel, you would select Man or Manual Analysis Mode and then use the Out knob to select the altitude slices. On the Airbus panel, you select ELEVN for Elevation Mode and use the Elevation knob to select altitude slices. Notice that these are split control panels allowing the captain and first officer to be in different modes, have different altitude slices, gain, and range settings. Other aircraft may have soft controls, where the mode and altitude slices are on an integrated control panel. On these panels, we use the knob on the right labeled altitude. Pull the knob out and then select the desired altitude slice. When the pilot enters this mode, the initial altitude slice shown is at the aircraft's current altitude. Slices can then be selected from 0 to 60,000 feet in 1,000 foot increments. If the aircraft climbs or descends, the selected altitude slice will still be shown. For slices below ground level, nothing is shown. On some installations, turbulence can also be overlaid on top of the reflectivity data, providing additional information. These pictures show a very quick and simple analysis. Here we have the same storm cell with slices extracted at 12,000 feet and 22,000 feet providing a clear deviation path. Let's look at analyzing some weather when it isn't quite as simple. For our example today, we're using a very simple control panel and a generic display. The left-hand display will be in WEX All mode, the automatic weather detection mode. The weather on this display is separated into flight path solid and secondary hashed 
off path weather. On the right hand display we'll be looking at altitude slices. The selected altitude slice is shown in two places. The selected range is also shown in two places. The range marks are scaled to the selected range and for the 160 nautical mile range selection currently shown they are at 40, 80, 120 and 160 nautical miles. The weather data we are going to analyze is real flight test data. To save time we'll step through different points in time as we perform our analysis. In this example the aircraft is at flight level 400 over Louisiana. Looking at the auto mode on the left, there are some cells with low tops and low reflectivity near the aircraft which are non-threatening. This is indicated by the hash lines within approximately 40 nautical miles. 120 miles ahead, there is some yellow reflectivity that warrants attention. Let's look at these two features using constant altitude slices. We'll start out at 13,000 feet and go up. Notice that the weather close to the aircraft tops out around 25,000 feet and that's why it is shown as off path. Looking at the two cells directly in front of us, we see they top out around 52,000 feet. We'll finish by selecting a slice at flight level 400, which is the aircraft's flight level. In this particular scenario, the fact that there isn't much difference between the two images beyond 80 miles doesn't necessarily mean all this weather is at flight level 400. It just indicates that given the resolution at this range, this is the weather that can be separated from the ground clutter. As the aircraft gets closer to the weather, the auto mode display shown on the left detects what looks like a patch of stratiform weather on the left side. We'll use the altitude knob to start looking at slices at 33,000 feet. Notice that an altitude slice at the aircraft's flight level of 40,000 feet indicates there is little reflectivity aloft in that area that would indicate a potential hazard. The convective area ahead is showing two distinct cells. The apparent increase in reflectivity from the previous display is caused by two factors. One, the radar is now able to distinguish the difference between weather reflectivity and ground clutter as the aircraft gets closer to the weather. And two, the radar can now resolve relatively small pockets of higher reflectivity because the beam width resolution is improving. At this point, you should expect the two cells ahead will require some type of avoidance maneuver. All other displayed weather is of no consequence. The range scale is now 80 nautical miles as the cells to be avoided are about 70 miles ahead. The all mode display on the left is showing a patch of yellow reflectivity immediately to the left of the two cells and a little bit closer. You can see the bulk of the reflectivity from this feature is not seen until about flight level 300 which reduces the threat level somewhat. The wind direction that day was from right to left so the pilot should be planning a deviation to the right side of the two cells which makes any reflectivity to the left of no interest. However, there is some weather 15 to 20 degrees to the right of track coming into view near the deviation path that will need to be monitored. An altitude slice at flight level 400 shows both cells to be carrying yellow reflectivity aloft. 20 miles closer, the cell on the right is showing much more reflectivity in auto mode. Using the altitude knob, a slice at flight level 400 shows it is the only cell that is a hazard at the aircraft's flight level. Also, the weather to the right of the two cells in the deviation path has developed into nothing of interest. When the cell is at a range where turbulence can be measured, additional evidence comes into view the magenta color, indicating the cell on the right is the most important one to be avoided. Using the altitude knob, a slice at flight level 350 shows a clear corridor on the right hand display for deviation around the weather. Here is another example that illustrates how auto mode and altitude slices are used to analyze and avoid convective weather. It will emphasize the use of constant altitude slices to analyze a line of convection in order to find an avoidance path. The aircraft is level at flight level 370 over Texas. On the 320 nautical mile range scale, there are two parallel lines of convective weather. The line at longer range looks rather impassable. But because the example is an actual flight test, the crew will use auto and altitude slices to find a suitable path through the closer line. 
the 320 nautical mile range display gives the big picture situation. The 160 nautical mile display gives more detail on the closer line of storms the crew will analyze to find a deviation path. The auto mode picture by itself doesn't seem to provide much hope, but looking at an altitude slice at flight level 370, there are two small, higher reflectivity cells on each side of the aircraft's track. Looking a little higher with a constant altitude slice at flight level 400, there appears to be a potential way through. These cells are still more than 120 miles away, so there remains considerable ambiguity regarding the precise echo top of any part of the weather. But so far, the analysis shows a weak part of the line directly ahead of the aircraft. The line is now just outside 80 nautical miles, and the aircraft has climbed to flight level 420. Again, the auto mode alone might be interpreted to indicate there is no path through. Looking at an altitude slice at flight level 400, the analysis shows that most of the action is to the right of track and the potential path through is persisting. The cells in this example are now at 60 nautical miles and looking at an altitude slice at flight level 330, there appears to be a low reflectivity path for the aircraft to go through. In this particular scenario, it probably would have been easier and safer just to go around this line to the right but it provided a useful example demonstrating how to effectively use analysis to determine a deviation path. All radar systems can detect weather. The RDR 4000 and 7000 don't stop there. They also provide tools allowing you to analyze the weather to determine a safe deviation path for avoidance. In future Honeywell Quick Topic videos, we'll look at uses of the vertical profile mode for weather analysis.